Hello there and welcome back to the channel. It's me Hawkins back again with another Starfield video. This time 10 questions I have about Starfield. Earth's current situation is completely unknown. After the war between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective, we don't know anything about the politics, economics or even habitability of the planet. We can see the solar system displayed on the galactic map, so it does look as though we can actually travel there. We also see our character walking past what looks like the Mars Spirit Rover trapped in sand, which again kind of hints that we can at least go there unless that's just a NASA Easter egg on a completely different planet. There was a leak that stated that the reason Earth is inaccessible is due to story reasons, so I guess we're just going to have to hang on and wait and see what happens. I don't want Starfield to repeat what I think was a mistake Cyberpunk made. Once the initial game intro was over, the choosing of Nomad, Street Kid or Corpo had very little bearing on the game. There were one or two times these choices had any options, and I felt they had very little impact. I'd really like to see your choices have much greater bearing on how the story flows and how interactions are developed with possible companions, factions, the world building in general, and if it could just be much more heavily integrated into the story, I'd really like that. And I think that could help it then capture that same replayability that their other games have had like Skyrim and Fallout. We love playing them and we want to play them more and more. You know, what we're doing with the, the pirates, the Crimson Fleet as well. They're not just this foe, let the player join them. What does that mean? It's a cool thing about Crimson Fleet, you know, what if you're good person and you want to be a good player and you don't want to play as a bad guy, you can side with the pirates or you can report back your superiors and be like basically space cop type of thing. So it'll let you be a good person and still play with the bad guys. So I think it's pretty clear that we can be the villain in the game if we want to be. How much of a villain we can be though is still to be determined. I mean, we could ignore the main storyline maybe and just decide that we want to go out into space hijack a bunch of ships, live the wildlife, but will we have it being one of those games where, yeah, we can be good or we can be bad, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we're going from A to B. I hope Starfield gives us something a little bit more. I'm hoping that there's going to be alternate endings so that when we live in this universe, we can explore it any way that we want to. And I think it has that potential if done correctly. I'm hoping there isn't going to be a limit on either. Ideally, I'd like to have my own fleet, but so far it really looks like it's just one ship shown with various builds using different components from different companies. Personally, I really enjoy base building and setting up colonies on lots of planets really appeals to me. And I'd hope they serve some function more than just resource gathering. So, you know, let me build a science outpost, a weapons depot, a ship manufacturing plant, um, a really lovely home along the most beautiful view I've found in game multiple times. Can we also build space stations? I mean, some of them that we've seen look really, really cool, but can we actually build those? Maybe set up trade hubs? I know that this is a single player game, but I'd quite like the ability to have a character that ends up becoming like the owner of a mega corporation. Um, which I think could be really quite cool. So we know that it's a cutscene to leave the atmosphere, but does that mean we don't have access to in-atmosphere flight? There is artwork that shows the city hub of Neon with what looks like suborbital craft, but are they just essentially fast travel taxis? Are we limited to walking range or rover range once we land on a planet? Kind of makes me wonder what kind of fast travel system they're planning on implementing, if indeed there is a fast travel system. If we are being allowed to pop bases down everywhere, it may get quite boring if there's really long times getting between places, especially in more desolate barren worlds. Will we have a remote hub instead of travelling to each base? Because if we have to leave a cutscene, select our base, have a cutscene, then land on the same planet, it could get really, really boring. If I could just jump into an atmospheric flyer, I'd quite happily travel from place to place manually because at least then I could explore. No, 
not just the appearance of your player and all that, but you know, we want all the personal interactions of NPCs, other characters in the game to be as impactful as possible. And for that, you have to believe these are real people. You're a real person interacting with real people. I'm hoping that they follow through with this idea of companions and NPCs being more immersive than just automatons. If I'm hiring a crewmate or someone to run my base, I want them to have some personality. I know they'll really flesh out companions, but I hope they will also make some effort with the NPCs that we choose. We already see that NPCs seem way more expressive and give off a more lived-in universe feel than just standing still. Will they be able to be sent off to do other stuff or given quests, missions? I mean, colony and ship management is something I really enjoy in games and I think it could be really good fun if implemented well and it could really improve the quality of the in-universe feeling of the game. My biggest worry is it's going to be like a bad cross between Mass Effect and No Man's Sky. You go to a planet, you probe that planet, you find the resources, you go down there, you mine them, and then you leave, and that's it for like 990 of them. I'm not expecting every planet to be full of mystery and intrigue, but I am worried that there'll be boring planet after boring planet, which is what stopped me playing No Man's Sky when it launched, after a hundred odd planets of nothing. I wonder if there will be like spatial anomalies, dangers or things to explore actually in space. Uh, I hope there is going to be things that we can find in systems and maybe in the spaces between, especially if there'll be a lot of planetary bodies that are just boring balls of ice. Give me wormholes, black holes, floating debris and all the things we usually see in sci-fi games. How cool would it be like to come across a ship, for example, that was floating in space that launched decades before and was like a piece of history? You know, procedurally generate these events as well, so it would make for some serious replayability. And uh, also just one small thing, if that system there doesn't have a planet with this guy on it, then I'll be very, very disappointed. For everything that we see and explore, how will it be recorded in-game? Will it be like the No Man's Sky Encyclopedia, or my preferred option, like the Dragonborn Museum from the Legacy of the Dragonborn mod for Skyrim? I loved that mod, a museum to display all the things I collected in the game in one place for me to look at. The hoarder in me loves that. That was the thing that annoyed me about No Man's Sky. I've got an entry on a book on a screen list after list. There's a few shots that look like old NASA museums and I'd love to see something like that in the game for when we find artifacts and stuff we can't put on display, like a, a space creature we come across and we kill. We can stuff it and show it off. There's been no hint of something like this in game but it is something I'd really enjoy seeing there. There's clearly alien life out there which has all seemed hostile so far, and we've seen plenty of things that want to eat us, but will there be any actual civilizations? There was a leak that I covered in another video that there would be up to nine alien races, but I'm not sure that's true. Too many races, and I feel that the comparisons to other games in the genre that have already dealt with multiple alien species would not be good for Starfield in the long run, especially if it wants to stand out from some of the classic sci-fi games that we've already had. I did have a comment on that video that did suggest having no alien races and have like a Space Dwemer style ra uh, race from Elder Scrolls and I hadn't even considered that at all and it got me thinking that I'd actually be quite happy exploring the remnants of another spacefaring civilization that just disappeared for some reason, leaving behind technology and knowledge that we have to puzzle over to figure out what happened, whether we even find out what happened to them at all. The question of what aliens will be in Starfield is one I'll be keeping a close eye on because it is something that I think could have massive impacts on how Starfield actually plays. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? So we find the artifact and they keep asking about the visions we saw. Now there is a massive part of me that doesn't want to know this at all 
until I play the game, but there's also a massive part of me that is worried about this. Will this all be something that we've seen before, derived from other popular space stories? Will this be a Mass Effect Prothean beacon warning? Will it be an invitation to join a galactic community? Will it just be knowledge stuck in my brain of a civilization long lost? I'm really hoping that Starfield will have a deep and interesting story, and my worry is it'll be a standard sci-fi cliché, using the visions as a warning about some imminent doom. I'm not even sure what I'd be happy with regarding them at the moment, and I flip between liking many different theories. I feel knowing in advance would make me both happy and sad, but maybe it'll be something they won't reveal at all, and we'll just have to wait to find out what the visions are once the game actually comes out. And there we have it, my 10 things that I would like to know about Starfield. At the end of the day, I am really looking forward to Starfield. I really would like it to be a game that you can live in, so to speak. Many a Skyrim playthrough that I've had have, has never even touched the main story, and I just lived in the world and had fun, but that was mostly thanks to mods. So I'd really love Starfield to have that feel from the go, but whether that's within Bethesda's scope, I just don't know. I'm also not getting overhyped. The burns of the past have made me much more cautious, and a lot of this is probably wild conjecture on my part, but if anything, it gives me a good excuse to put together and edit another video. So if you've made it to the end, thank you for watching and take care.